growing up watching american tv that's why some of us have these accents i mean <laughs> you know you only go to sleep when the job is done consistency professionalism and just work well with people live in the moment chuma period this has been a long time coming bro it has it has it has i'll start by telling a story you know like a lot of people because i'm based in sa when they ask me how to make it in sa mm -hmm. i always say like you know you're probably better off coming to study for like three years learn the system then after learning the system it maybe it might take you another two years and you know I, i say all that stuff and then i always say the only exception is chuma period <laughs> Because the story is like you just landed like was it the first week dude like my my story and I always want to share this because yeah. like you said I think I'm an exception um, an exception when when even just getting to South Africa it was it happened so fast you know um one day I'm at home my uncle visits me from South Africa uh, and then he he comes to see me he's like i want to see you before i leave mm. and this is a man who comes into zambia a lot uh and this one time he says i want to see you uh, and so he says okay i'll see you after work now my uncle works with the with the mines he's yeah. a he's a mining engineer so when he tells you i'll see you after work it could be 1 a.m oh 3 a.m you know uh this time it was around 23 so he says i'm done i'm leaving tomorrow but i need to see you where are you I think at that time I was living in Ch in Chalala. Before, how old were you just for context? I was uh how how old was I? It was in Probably 20 2007 6 I think 2007 Do the math. When were you born? Let's do the math. 81. <laughs> 81. I was, I was okay. born in 81. 81, okay. so 81 91. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> so you were like 20 25 20 25? somewhere there. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, yeah. somewhere there. So I say oh, right, wait before we continue because they're going to butcher us if we're wrong on that math. But it was okay, it, okay he's going to pull out yeah. the calculator while you do that. So yeah. so he <laughs> says I want to see you I'm coming. Give me give me where you are. So I give him a landmark. Uh and for real he shows up. We sit, we talk for a few minutes and he goes, "You know what? You're really good at this radio thing of yours, yeah. this entertainment thing. I think you need to come to South Africa. There you can make it." I was like, "Well, hook a brother up you know I, i'm game uh I, by that time i was um i was i was going through a lot you know i had lost both my parents oh, man, so this man. is me now as a young man um navigating this life thing mm. on my own you know uh, i'm the first born in my in my family so i was, I was a 24 year old trying to live as a parent and as a young man as well trying to understand what life is Mm. So he comes to me and says I think you should move. Uh and by that time I needed something just to get me away from thinking about my parents death. So I was running away. Mm. So when that opportunity came I was like yeah hell yeah I'm coming. When do I start off? Then he says okay I'll call you tomorrow morning when I when I reach South Africa. For real he gets home talks to his wife and by that time I was working for QFM. Yeah. So during the day I'm at work preparing for my show. I was doing the drive time show. Uh I start the show and then I get a phone call, a South African number that I've never seen before. And it's my auntie. And she's like, "Yo, uh your flight has been booked. Tomorrow you're leaving." Wow. I'm like, "What? What?" She's like, "Yeah, so forget everything. In fact, don't even pack your clothes. Just go home, get a backpack. Tomorrow morning, first flight." here your flight details i like snap but i have a job she's like forget about all of that you're moving so now i'm like what do i tell the company oh because because no notice and yeah stuff no like. you so no, none of that and i didn't want to burn bridges mm. so what do i do uh fortunately the guy who was running programs manager at qfm by then was mbachi uh thrill yeah and mbachi is is my elder brother so i call him in the booth my like, brother look this is what's happening it's like nigga even thinking about it <laughs> bounce <laughs> bounce i'm like but i can't just pack up and he was like nigga I'll ga i got you just yeah. bounce i don't know what to tell them here i hope i don't put machi in trouble <laughs> now he's moved <laughs> you know <laughs> so it's like yeah just just bounce why are you even thinking about it i will cover it for you just bounce so i'm doing my show and i can't even tell folks that this is my last show i'm not coming back tomorrow 
So I'm doing my show. I'm like, what do I do? How, how I'm not even focused. Now I'm thinking I'm moving to another country, South Africa, you know, the stuff I've seen on TV, mm. blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I'm going to go. So, but when I get there, what do I do? It's a new country. It's a big city, Johannesburg. What do I do? Where do I even start? Then I remember uh, while I was doing my show at Q, I used to do the gig guide for Channel O. Ah. So every Friday they would cross over, I'd do the Zambian gig guide. So so this was the, the it would be a TV thing, but then your voice would be on. Yes, but not was were you on on video? Or no, no, no. So it was call? just a photo of me and then a photo of you on the screen yeah. and audio. Okay. So they did that or uh, with with uh, so different countries, different countries. Mm. So I did the Zambian side of it, and that was on the show Obama. Oh yeah. So I, when I get there a week. I'm just chilling at home. And then my uncle, the same guy who, who got me the ticket, was like, you're here now. Uh, I'm not expecting you to just sit at home. <laughs> Make a plan. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, where do I start? He's like, well, here's the the map, the yellow book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the South Af- <laughs> Joe Berg's yellow book. Start making phone calls. Uh, you need talk time. Here's the phone. I put talk time in here for you. Start making phone calls make this thing work i'm out that's how he left back to his busy schedule so now i'm going through the yellow book but i remembered i i had spoken to the guys before i left uh the guys from channel o so i called them while i was in Joburg. that's my first week so i called them i said listen i'm around um i just want to come see how tv works i have no idea how it works i'm a radio background it's like ah that's good actually i have something better for you i have auditions yeah so come for an audition i'm like but i've never done this before it's like ah, it's not a problem just come and have fun you know so he gives me the address it was in randberg yeah he gives me the address so i tell my uncle he's like yeah so next week you must go i'll give you transport money again use the yellow book Get on a taxi. So taxis are different from Z. Kulibati, Jona, Chawama. It's the signs. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one finger. Yeah, you know. Means so he, the he, index finger, in fact, not just one. If you're going to Joburg, Joburg yeah. 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 So if I'm coming from Bramley. I'm going to Randburg. Mm. So he tells me there's a Randburg direct bus from Bramley. Uh, so just go to the bus station. Freaked out, and I think the bus station in Bramley is in Alex, mm. if I'm not mistaken. So I walk to, to the Alex bus stop, shit scared. Mm. But I'm like, yeah, I'm in Joburg, whatever happens, whatever happens. So I get on a bus, get to Randburg, ask around where is what, what. Now on my way to where the auditions were, I walk past Mnet, yeah. the, the, the head office. I walk past them, like, wait, is this a sign? You know, yeah, this yeah. is a sign. So, because back home, I used to tell folks, one day I'll work at Channel O. One day I'm going to work here. And they would laugh at me. Ah, you're now all old. Yeah. So I, I'm walking past multi choice. I'm like, is this a sign? One day I'll come here. So I go for my audition. I was the first one there. I get there. The, the guy who was auditioning, I think his name is Joy, Joe, Roy. Sorry if I'm butchering his name, but um, that's the guy who was doing auditions. It's like, oh, you're here early. You're the first one. Come. We know you don't have TV experience, so even better you came here early. So I'll leave you in this room. Do as many takes as you want. I'm like, but I don't know what to do. How do I do this? So he gives me a community script. It's like, just pretend you're on radio, but now there's a camera. Mm. So just do your links. I'm like, okay, I'll try this. Now I'm nervous. Yeah, yeah. I think I did a hundred takes. But they were they were patient with you then. Yeah, because I was the first one. So yeah. he just left me in there, went to have his coffee, came back. Are you done? If you're not satisfied, you have all the time. Just stay in there, do your thing. Until you're done, don't come out. So I stayed in the booth alone. I did about a hundred takes. Walked out and he looks at me, are you satisfied? I'm like, eh, it's like, uh, it's fine, it's fine. Just sit here and wait, your friends are coming. So I sit and wait, I think it was a bad idea. I think it was a good if I look at it now. But now I start seeing all these people coming for auditions. Now some of these guys I've been watching on TV. Yeah. So I'm like, shit, I'm not getting this job. Uh, these professionals here yeah, in, yeah, in, in, yeah. in cafe stuff. But anyway, I stick around and I see people do the auditions. And then he comes back to the queue and he's like, you're still here. 
I'm like, well, I just wanted to see how other people are doing it. It's like, if you want to do it again, I can give you another shot, but you have to wait for everybody. So I said, I ah, know it's fine. I'm fine. I can go now. So I start off. I say my buys. I walk. I walk down five minutes down the road, and then something tells me, go back, dude. Yeah, if you're not happy, just go back. Just go do it again. You've been given another shot. Just go back. So I walk back. You're back. I'm like, yeah, I need to do it again. Like, I like your spirit. Sit here. <laughs> <laughs> Sit here. So he waited until everybody did the audition. I think there was like 50 people. Yeah. Everybody did the audition. And then he says, okay, now you can come in. Again, I'm going to leave you in here. Do your thing. You're my last one. I walk in there. I think I did five takes. And I was satisfied with those five takes. And I tell him I'm good now. It's like, okay, cool. We'll give you a call if we pick you. Thank you very much. And I walk out. Two weeks later, um, my uncle comes back from work. So now the, the uncle who took me to Joburg uh, had his young brother, my other uncle. So my other uncle was living in Randburg. Mm. He just got an apartment in Randburg, right next to MultiChoice. And this apartment only had a mattress. So he was, this man was starting his life. He's like, where am I? So I gave him his phone number to, to the guys. So they called him while he was at work. Uh, first of all, he didn't pick up, so they left a voice note. And then later in the evening, he comes, Ew, wow, pasa maguero, number yang. Oh, and a vaccine of my voice note, wow, puba. Tell them this is your uncle's phone, it's not your phone. Listen to this voice note. I don't want this rubbish here. Wait, wait, but uh, yet, had he listened to them, so he yes. was playing with you? Yeah, so he was messing with yeah. me. Yeah. I actually love my rubbish voice note. Well, I was in phone number of Uncle Bako. I'm like, oh, snap, what have I done? Who did I give this number to? And I'm thinking, I never gave any girl this number. Yeah. Anyway, I play the voice note. Uh, and he's looking at my face while I'm playing this voice note. And it's a guy's voice. He's like, hey, Chuma, how are you? I got some good news for you, buddy. So we picked you. So you're no longer going to Zambia. Forget about your, your passport. You can throw it away. <laughs> I'm like, what? I had to play that voice note five times. And the whole time, my uncle is just looking at me, just trying to see yeah, yeah, my facial yeah. expression. We picked you, buddy. So go have a drink. We start training next month. I look at him and he just gives me a hug. He's like, it's done, dude. Yeah, wow. in. This is how it starts. And but you see, the is, rest is history. It's like crazy favor because, I mean, like the, to, to give you that much time and leeway, it's, yeah. it's, it's a rare thing. Very I've rare. Been to auditions over there, it doesn't happen like that. Yeah. Normally, you find guys are impatient with you and you are first and last. So, like, that's biblical. The yeah, first it is. shall be last. Dude, <laughs> dude. Yeah, no, it was. It was. Which is the math, by the way. It's 26 years old. Yes. 26 <laughs> years old. Yes. Okay, so, so t tell me this. Um, Here's, here's one of the questions I, I, I've had in mind for a while regarding your stay there. Uh, you seem to have been close with DJ Waxy. Um, Waxy, obviously, an international figure. Was he one of the guys that you that was um, kind of an ally in, in terms of uh, your, your stay and your trajectory? Because it's not always easy, especially if you're not from South Africa, yeah. to make it on a channel that's uh, predominantly based there yeah uh waxy waxy was more than just an ally for me he's he's like an elder brother to me so when i got there um w our boss at that time was an asian dude um who was really so into africa you know uh wanting to to make african entertainment big and i think that's why he got the job mr dean lester dean big shout out to len uh lester said you know what this industry you've come in, you're foreign, you're from outside, is very protective. They protect their own. Uh, so it won't be easy for you to get in. But if you hang out with this dude, mm. uh, telling me about Waxy, if you hang out with this dude, this dude will show you the ropes. Waxy has made it more than the locals themselves. Figure out how he has done it and learn from him. Mm. Waxy was so open to that as well. When when I approached him, it was like, actually, when I saw you come in, I was like, this is my brother. Mm. I'll show him the ropes. So Waxy guided me. Everything that I know about that industry, it's Waxy. Mm. Waxy was, was more than just the Nala. He was a big brother. Yeah. I'm going to fast forward to just get your comments on two other 
individuals who are successful, crazy successful in two different regions who you've worked with and just get get a sense of what you think makes them successful and maybe what you learned from them. So later on, you know, the, the channel O thing um, happened. You, you've had many iterations in, in terms of your professional journey, but you worked with DJ Spoo. Yeah. So um, wow. your comment on on him regarding what I asked and also Kenny T. Yeah. Because Kenny T in this region also um, hugely successful, hugely visionary, but you've, you've kind of had a sense of both those individuals. So maybe what are some of the ingredients that you think make up um, those two guys and, and maybe speak to some of the successes that we see with them? Yeah. Um, so Kenny T and Sbu, I'm glad you picked those two. They have um, one dominant similarity with how their work, how they work. It's their work ethic. Mm-hmm. Um, Sbu, so with DJ Sbu, I went there to just produce his show, uh, the DJ Sbu Breakfast Show. But then I ended up being given the whole Sbu brand, mm. um, which was very scary. I mean, this is DJ Sbu. Yeah. And then his team trusts me with, we, j- we don't just like what you're doing with the show. We want you to handle the whole brand. Mm. So where Sbu is going to be at after the show, which meeting is going to have, uh, where, which endorsement is taking, you have to be part of, of all of that. Mm. What I learned hanging out with Sbu. So Sbu is one of those also gatekeepers. Sbu mm. will give his people first before he puts on anybody from outside. Uh, and I, un- I understood why, because where he comes from, Sbu comes from the hood, Tembisa. Mm. And he has seen a lot of black folk in the hood not making it because no one's giving them a shot. So he will always put his people first. But once he notices that you're also hungry, um, you're an African child, you have a same similar background with his, and you want to do this, he opens the door for you. Mm-hmm. Anything you want, Sbu will hook you up. Uh, if you've noticed, the, the kids that hang around Sbu, most of them make it because Sbu will not let you just sit there. And he will, he's very blunt. Mm-hmm. He will tell you straight up, I'm here to push my brand. And while I'm pushing it, if you're not learning anything, that's your own fault. When I'm booked for an interview, I show up an hour early. Just coming here, I was panicking because I wanted to be here an hour early. You know, but but that's some of the stuff I've learned from guys like Sbu. Professionalism, uh, how you relate with other people. Your talent, not only your talent to take you further, but also how you relate with other people, how you work with other people. If, If you're a dick, Mm. No matter how much talent you have, you're not going anywhere. That's something I've learned from Sbu. Kenny T, similar. Kenny is, and, and if you notice, Kenny's a business model here in Zambia. It's very different from every other radio station. Mm. He's got Power Cowboy, Power Livingston, Livingston. Mm. Power Lusaka. Mm. They're all different, but they're one thing. And then now he's got Power TV. Consistency professionalism and just work hard if you mm. if if you only go to sleep when the job is done could mm. in kumbuka 17 hours mm. that's boo boo call you at 3 a.m uh dude we need to do this i'm awake wake up mm. so you can't be sleeping if the boss is awake right so those are some of the stuff i've learned from these guys consistency professionalism and just work well with people what made you initially fall in love with with media? You started with with radio, obviously, with your journey. But what was the attraction? It's uh, it's the power it commands, you know. Uh, growing up watching American TV, um, that's why some of us have these accents. I mean, <laughs> you know, we we want to talk like them. We want to live like them. We want to walk like them. Uh, we want to behave like them. And I've, to me, it was like, this is so much power. Imagine what you can do is power for just Africa, mm. you know, to push African stories. Uh, you can put a president. I, I always make this joke about one day I'll put a president in state house through media. Mm. And people don't believe me, but I'm serious about it, you know, because I've noticed I realize the power the media has. I always give this an, this example. Uh, when MTV came to Africa, 
I used to watch a lot of MTV. And then there was, um, what's her name? Aung San Suu Kyi. Yeah. From uh, Myanmar. Mm, mm. There was a time she was arrested by the Chinese government. Um, and MTV started doing this campaign, Free Aung San Suu Kyi. That's how most people knew her. Yeah. But they did it without any politicians. Mm. It was just musicians and the youth. Mm. They just did concerts all over Europe. Free Aung San Suu Kyi, free Aung San Suu Kyi. No politician came on, on the channel to say, hey, do this, do this, the stuff we do here in Africa. They just did it with music and the youth. Yeah. And she was freed. Yeah. That is power. So that's what attracted me to, to the media. Uh, and, and I would love to use it to change the mindset of Africans, to mm. change how we see ourselves. Uh, if we always say it's time for us to, 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 to share our stories our way mm. by us. I've noticed most of us who are running media are not actually doing that. We, we fall into the same trap of, uh, let's just make the buck, man. Yeah. Let's just make the buck. Let's just make money. We'll get to that later. Uh, I think we're misusing that power. So that's what attracted to me, that me to media. It's the power of media. Now, we've spoken a lot about maybe the, the glitz and the glamour and the successful uh, things that you... You've done a lot of stuff. I mean, you had the, the African Top 20 show. So besides being, you know, in front of the camera, you've done radio shows, you've been producing, you've done like a hell of a lot of stuff. And for somebody who has, in terms of quantity, um, done as much as you have, there has to be moments where you've thought like this this battle, this this journey is 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 not treating me right or tell whatever. me about it <laughs> <laughs> what have been some of the 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 moments that i've had you like ah why yeah. oh there's a lot man i don't even well, know give us two <laughs> i don't even know where to start man. give us it's, the abridged version of of what geez two. <laughs> it's a uh, wow it's a lot it's um being misunderstood mm. um sometimes when you when you know you you know what you want um, you've tried a formula and it works. Um, just trying to explain it to other people that this can work. This is how the rest of the industry is doing it around the world. Yeah. Let's do it right. Let's not take shortcuts. It comes off as arrogant, uh, intimidating, and you get blocked from a lot of work, you know? Mm -hmm. So I have lost a lot of good work because people thought, South Africa, <laughs> you know, uh, when when all I want is just let's do it right. Let's yeah. our industry has so much potential. Um, we I think we need to stop taking shortcuts. Let's just do it right, mm. so we can all make this money. There's a lot of money to be made. Yeah. So um, being misunderstood, that's like the biggest one. Um, the other one is just. Getting to make people buying into the idea of media itself. You know, I, I always tell the new, the new kids now that it's easier for you guys now. You can walk to uh, a corporate office and say, hey, my name is Chitich. Mm. I have a million followers. But let me be brand ambassador. And they're like, sign you up real quick. I'm an influencer. When really there's nothing you're influencing. Mm. You just have numbers. But they're buying into that. And then for, for some of us who are old school, uh, social media is not really our thing. But we know how to do the work. Mm. We can deliver, you know? Yeah. And you go in there and you say, this is what I can do. I'm not an influencer. I'm influential. Mm. Let me do this campaign for you. They're like, ah, but we, you don't have numbers. It's like, but I'm not selling numbers. I'm selling this campaign and I know the people I talk to yeah. will buy into this and this is how we can sell this product even better. So it's it's also convincing uh, corporates to give you the resources. Resources. Yeah. Finding resources to to do this has been has been hell, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's frustrating sometimes. I've I've given up a lot of times. You're like Forget this. Uh, let me just find a corporate job and sit on a desk. Yeah. But that also is painful. 
because because we're not that's the thing the, the, because of talent and gifting and and things of that so there are a lot of people and i'm not you know um uh, uh talking down on on any person because we all have you know responsibilities and people to feed etc but you find there are a lot of people in media who start out in radio and you can see them come alive when they're on air or on tv yeah but then next thing you know because of circumstance or whatever you find the person now is the pr person for yeah. company x because that provides more stability. Yep. Um, whereas it's it's good for um, longevity and it's good for the the person and their family, but it it might be a loss for the audience and a loss for the, end the person's passion as well yeah. you know, on the inside. That's the big one. Yeah. You yourself in the inside. The, yeah. the the it kills something in you. Mm. It, it kills something in you. No matter what job you find that will pay you a million kwacha mm. if that thing is dead in you even on on that project you're doing it you won't give it your hundred yeah because there's something that's dead in you and you feel it and you know but like you said for stability people will choose to just uh, i'll just be in the office do you also face this thing with expectations i mean i remember some time ago this was like maybe 20 years ago i was being interviewed here by uh, you know a mutual friend of ours um, back then i think it was his early days on radio he was very excitable and he was saying so based on what you're doing in essay uh, you know talking to me the next thing should be you're in a soapy <laughs> you're acting in a soapy that's the furthest thing from my mind you know what i mean but <laughs> the expectation was like this is these are the steps yeah you, know, you do well here and then you move on, to yeah you know you see dingo generation you know the river um but if if it's not what you what you're about you know but do you have that thing where people project yes their expectation on you yeah and, yeah like like right now everyone's expecting me to be an mc Oh, like at events. Yeah, I thought they'd be like you need to have a media house. Well, th that that too, but yeah. because maybe that I have put it into the universe. Oh, okay, yeah. But the one thing everyone is expecting me to do is MC, and I'm like, yeah. but it's not my thing. Yeah, I, I would rather leave it to the guys who are really good at yeah. it and enjoy it. I I have done it before, but I don't enjoy it. Like that's that's me and news reading. Yeah, Le Levi is here to to ask a couple of questions as well. But before he gets in, I just wanted to also check this with you. So, uh, emceeing is not your thing. No. Uh, are there any other areas which you battle with? Um, generally, it could be anything. It could be, you know, uh, managing uh, yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the one. That's the big one. Managing myself. I I battle with that because I'm too critical of myself. Mm. So I feel like everything I put out is not good enough. Uh. Yeah, so sometimes I'll sit on ideas because I feel like Ugh, it's not going anywhere. And then two months later, I see somebody else do it <laughs> and it's popping. I'm like, ah, <laughs> I should have just done it, you know? Story so of our lives. I, I, need, I need somebody to just say, dude, wake up, let's go do yeah. it you know yeah so managing myself is one of the big ones um but also yeah emceeing is 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 another thing i'm not i'm not managing talent oh artist management so because yeah, i yeah. did it once uh and everyone thinks ah why aren't, why don't you continue doing that mm. the one artist i managed which was ice prince was fun yeah it was a learning curve for me uh, but I learned that I, I, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, okay. I'm going to come back with uh, more uh, queries about the, because you, you, there, there are a lot of uh, those opportunities. You also had to interact with um, artists who are celebrated in our, in our world now, and you got to interact with them at the early phases. So yeah. we'll touch on that in a bit, but Levi takes the mic. All right. Um, so I've been a big fan of your. Is it is it late night with Chuma? Yes. And the one episode that caught my attention was the one you did with EMR. Yeah. Um, I know him personally as a graphic designer, and for me, it was a very unique sort of like crossover seeing like a radio personality talking with a visual person. Yeah. In a way, and even just the way the conversation flowed, it was very. It was very insightful and it was very authentic. Thank you. Thank so, you. So, like, what, what was your, um, shall I say, um, criteria or mm -hmm. like reasoning for having such 
like an out of like usual like out of like artists yeah. who make noise on social media but like a true seasoned profession doing like the work like how did you set that whole thing up and how did nice now, it, yeah. glad to know you listen uh because sometimes when you're on radio you think nobody's listening <laughs> <laughs> especially <laughs> especially the slot i'm doing it's friday night and i'm having conversations friday night uh people expect uh, no one would be listening at that time people are drinking so the whole point for for late nights with chuma uh, i wanted to bring conversations that i have with my friends or colleagues while i'm having a drink mm, mm, yeah so yeah. that's the whole point of late nights with chuma so even the guests i bring on the show those are people i'd like to interact with when i'm having a drink um and also these are the people that work in an industry i passionately love so I didn't just want to talk to the the the, the front face of of the industry. I want to I want to expose people to the guys who are also kicking major ass in the background mm -hmm. that usually never get a, a shot to talk. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I'll have guys like EMR come on. Uh, a lot of a lot of us didn't know that EMR is responsible for some of the biggest artist works. covers yes yes that have come out including the logo on on the screen right now see oh really yeah. see ah, okay <laughs> so amazing i didn't know yeah. see so oh, okay. so so a lot of people don't don't know these guys right and and i'm like but these guys do so much work they make they make our messages pop out loud with their visuals mm -hmm. we need to talk to these people we need to understand get in their heads and understand where they're at how do you come up with a logo like z flashback mm -hmm. you know and then emr is one of those crazy ones you give him an idea five hours later he sends you this thing and there's no sending it back for changes that that's how he did most of my stuff i was like who the hell is this guy you know so i i needed people to talk to to hear him out uh so that's how i pick my 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 guests the other the other night i had pasta gladys yes, yes. on a friday night and people are like dude Uleta ba pasta on a friday night what are you going to talk about and i was just like i don't know but pasta gladys talks to a lot of us youth who are going through this life thing like i am i am mm -hmm. and i would love to have a conversation with somebody that wise while i'm having a drink so they can guide me through life you know and that's how i pick my guests so that's what late nights with uh, chuma is all about cool and uh another thing i uh, i've noticed throughout your your chat so far is you you speak highly about professionalism uh, discipline and also just being critical of yourself so what how do you separate yourself from your work and look at it through a different lens if you're always so self-critical mm -hmm. of yourself in a way because on my end sometimes the line is blurred and i often make uh, decisions based of my my perceived emotional state of that thing I've made yeah. instead of it being a factual thing like oh this is what was achieved in that way so like how do you separate yourself between being critical and just seeing things for the way they are I don't think I'm even there yet dude I'm still struggling with that yeah. um I think it's a it's an ongoing process for me uh separating myself from from work but I always remind myself and and I always tell uh, others getting into the business that this is work it's a job so no matter how much popular you become uh cuz in in our field especially if you're in front camera front mic it's easy for it to get to your head you know mm. and that's where you start losing it mm. it's very easy for it to get to your head because uka tsuka chepanja hey hi how are you hey, you know <laughs> it get it's easy to get for it to get to your head and then you fo you start forgetting that this is work yeah. this is what pays my bills mm -hmm. this is not me mm -hmm. this is a job so i always have to remind myself that always i have lost uh, great opportunities because i was in my feelings mm. enough great opportunities and instead of me going home and crying about it i just learn from that so next time i'm going to handle myself better but i always have to remind myself this is a job and speaking of jobs uh, my for my final question is money money is a big part of this job and often people 
in this space, including me as well, we often have to either prove our worth yeah. or negotiate our worth in a way. So how, what, what sort of advice would you give like, like, a, like a youngster who's like getting into this space, whether it's in front of the camera, behind the camera, uh, or any role in between on how you position yourself to make money? Yeah. And also position yourself to earn the money for that particular position that you're doing. The the first thing I was told when I joined Channel O um, by uh, Warren Blexley. Warren is, is one of the biggest directors in, in Africa right now. So he was the one training us. He's, he The first thing he told me was, don't chase the money. Let the money chase you. Mm-hmm. How do you make the money chase you? Make yourself valuable. Improve on your skill set. Uh, Chilu is a great example. Mr. Lemba will go online and buy microphones, buy gadgets. Expensive <laughs> microphones. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? He's adding value to himself. He's, he's learning how to do, to edit. Uh, Mr. Lemba doesn't need to edit audio. He just needs to leave his voice and bounce, mm-hmm. you know? But this man will sit and edit audio. He has taught himself how to do that. He's taught himself how to shoot. He's taught himself how to edit video. He doesn't have to, but he's adding value to himself. This is one thing I I noticed when I was working with DJ Spoo. Um, There was a time he wasn't available to do the show. So uh, the team leader says, let Chuma do the show. So a lot of folks on the team didn't know I could do radio, but the the boss knew because he saw my my CV. He's like, well, let Chuma do the show. So I said, okay, I'll do it. So I get on on air and I'm doing the show, but then I was playing um, clips and inserts as well. So they're like, who made this? And I said, I did. So everyone was shocked. Like, what can't you do? (laughs) (laughs) Like, uh, I can't be DJ (laughs) Spoo, you know? But but how do you know all of this? I'm like, okay, so this is one thing I appreciate about my country. When we were at QFM, you were the producer, you were the technical producer, you were the host, you were the director. You you had to learn everything, (laughs) you know? You had to learn everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's painful when you're going through it, but you only realize the benefits when you go to a place where they ask, can you do this? And you do it for them. Chuma can do all of this one. Just bump his cheese up. This guy can do everything. He's valuable. He's a valuable asset. If we lose this guy, we're screwed. Mm -hmm. So that's how now the money starts chasing you. If you make yourself valuable. Um, there's a lot of us who are on radio right now who can't even cut audio. Wow. We don't even know what Adobe is. Yeah. We don't know what SoundForge is. Mm. You know, um, Chibale is here. Chibale will tell you when I started at Phoenix, I just told him, I'll do my own imaging. Just give me the voice. It's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. He just sent me the voice and I did my own imaging. I've made his job easy. He doesn't have to worry about imaging for my show. Mm-hmm. But already I've shown him that ah, this guy can do this. This guy can do this. I hope the company has noticed that. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm showing the company that I'm a more valuable asset. I can't just sit on air and, you know, talk. I can also edit audio. Mm-hmm. I have a guy who, who films my show. Mm-hmm. Now what I tell him is send me the raw footage. I'm learning how to to cut up stuff yeah, of my own. Yeah. The other day is like, ah, boss, my mom was still on my comes at Pocantrit. But I'm like, no, I just need to add more value to myself. So always keep learning, mm-hmm. keep improving, keep adding skills to whatever little skill set you have. You add value to yourself, then the money starts chasing you. It's easier for you to go into a meeting and negotiate your worth. You already have your worth. I'm worth 10 grand. You, can you afford 10 G's? No. Okay, give me eight. I can't go be- beyond eight. Give me eight mm-hmm. and we can work. And I'll still give you all of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, all right, cool, cool. Uh, back to Uncle Chilo. <laughs> No, that's dope, man. I feel like we should just end it now. <laughs> <laughs> all, we've extracted all the value from you. Yeah. Right, I'm going to put the mic down before I get stamped for. Okay, cool. There we go. Uh, last question. You spoke earlier when we started, you spoke about your parents, right? 
and um, th- how tragically it hit you when when they passed on. I remember ni- it was ninety eight or ninety nine when you came for Children's Day of broadcast. Yeah, ninety ninety eight, ninety eight, and. So when you came, went back to Phoenix, it was like you were saying it was a full circle moment. Yeah. So, so my question is, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, if, were they involved in that, or was it the school? And and I asked that because, and then did they have any media inclination? Because it's not only you who's in media; it's your sister as well. Yeah. Um, so is it is it a family story, or you know, just maybe help shed some light on so that situation? Actually, none of my folks, in fact, no one in the family has ever done media, taken this path. Um, Unfortunately, my mother died before she could even hear or experience uh, me and my sister doing what we're doing now. But that, that, that year when I, when I came to Phoenix for Children's Day of Broadcasting, um, Auntie Yuji, Virginia Temba. Yeah, what was she then? She was the, I think she was marketing, I think she was marketing manager. I can't yeah. Remember. Yeah. So, Auntie Yuji always knew that there's a kid who loves this music thing. Yeah. There's a kid who loves this entertainment thing. So, when that opportunity came, I think that was the first one ever to be done in Zambia. Mm. I think you guys did it first, Phoenix. Uh, I'm saying you guys because you were a station yeah, manager station there. Manager, active station manager. Yeah. Um, so I think that was the first one ever in Zambia. So she was looking for kids to do it. And she's like, wait, I have a kid at home yeah. who can do this. Um, my dad was a typical traditional African man. Media is not a career. Mm. You have to be an accountant, you have to be a doctor, you have to be this. I'm not taking you to expensive schools so you can just be a DJ. You know, that, that's what he was. Uh, but fortunately, that time, he got the chance to listen to me on radio. Mm. Uh, so when I came back home, so it was sort of like he gave a stamp of approval. Yeah. It's like, I, I heard you do this. You really like this thing, right? I'm like, yes, I do. It's like, you sound really good. I'm like, yeah. So can I do my media studies now? It's like, actually, yeah. In fact, I'm going to call a few of my friends at ZNBC mm. to see what they can do for you. But then, unfortunately, he did not uh, make it to the next few months. He passed on. Uh, so no one in the family had media background. It was just interest for me. Uh, my mother made us watch a lot of TV. Um, and I think for her, that was a way of expanding our minds to to think bigger, not to just think here. Think beyond your wildest dreams. That's what my mom used to say. Your wildest dreams can come true. Mm. So when you're dreaming, dream big, you know, don't limit yourself and then work towards that dream. So she made us watch a lot of TV, especially entertainment TV. Maybe she did see it in me. I don't know. I never had a chance to speak to her about that. So that's the only thing I can remember that kind of got me into the business. My sister, I think it was just me being a bad brother and she was following all my bad, <laughs> my bad ideas. <laughs> She did well, though. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and I'm proud of my sister, man. I, I'm really proud of, of what she has achieved. So, yeah, that's no media background. It was just interest. ZNBC beat us to it, by the way. They did the Children's Day of Broadcasting before us ah. uh, on TV, though. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, you know, we I think we did it better. <laughs> yeah, no, I, we, we kicked ass, man. We kicked ass. I, I, I remember that day, like... You know, um, so most there's mo- a photo there, isn't it? Like, yes, there is. There is. So most most yeah, let's, the- let's let's not let that photo see see the the light of day. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's let's show it. Show let's show it. Gap, man. Like our let's station show manager, it. you were there. With kids' deals. Let's show <laughs> it. Let's show it. And and I must say uh, a, a a huge thank you to you, to you, TiVo and Case Mask, because you you guys helped us. You guided us through that whole process. Uh, for for you guys to just allow these kids to come mess up your airwaves, <laughs> and and look what you did now, you know. And, and most folks at Phoenix don't even know that that's where my 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 yeah, dream roots. Yeah. yeah, that's where it started, you know. Yeah. So that's why me coming back to Phoenix is 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 God. It's God, man. Yeah. It's God. I know I said last one, but last last one. You speaking to a younger Chuma, giving him advice based on how things 
have have panned out? What kind of things are you saying to a younger version of you? Stop being scared. Stop running. Just live in the moment. Uh, a lot of things passed me by because I was still running. I was scared. So I, I never got to live in the moment. Only now when I'm, I only stopped running when I came back to Zambia. Mm. Uh, and only now I'm, I'm looking at my life and what I've gone through and the, the many things I've achieved. The many, you, you mentioned earlier, uh, I met most of these big artists now. Yeah, before they were who they are now. Yeah. Um, and would sit and talk about this industry now. Mm. But I don't have any pictures. Yeah. I don't have any moments where we're just having a good time. I don't have any of those because I wasn't living in the moment. I was running. I was scared. Mm. Mm. For me, it was just, yeah, let me go meet the bunch quick, fast. And let's move to the next one. Uh, I managed Ice Prince for, I think, three years. I don't have one picture with him. Mm. It's, it's just work. So I was always running and very scared. I don't know what I was scared of, but I know what I was running away from. I was running away from the death of my parents. I just wanted to forget. Yeah. Uh, and I missed out a lot on that. So I told my younger self, stop running, live in the moment, enjoy it. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Nothing left to say, wow.